Local programming on KRWG made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fronteras, a changing America. I'm Anthony Moreno. The digital divide is a gap that exists between different regions and also demographics to the accessibility to technology and communications. Here to discuss the digital divide is Dr. Jan van Dijk. He is a professor, author, and world-renowned expert regarding the digital divide. He has investigated the social aspects of information and communications technology since 1985. Dr. Van Dyke, thank you very Great. much for being here. Okay. You know, when it comes to addressing the digital divide, it seems as if there is a major focus on getting a computer or internet access to everyone. Is that the main part of solving this divide? If not, what is? It's only the first part of s solving this problem because the divide is about having and about using computers and other digital media, like also smartphones and the like. It's so it's about having and using the problem of the future. It was just the past because in the last 20 years, the most problem was, of course, that people didn't have the equipment, the technology to have the access to it. Now you see m many people still have this access to this technology, but the problem is that they can't use it very well. That doesn't mean that having is no, not a problem anymore because at this time you see that rich people still have everything. They have all the best equi equipment, most, uh, the, the, the best computers, the best laptops, iPads, they have the best smartphones, while poor people only have some poor computers, they have uh, minor uh, phones, not that smart, you know. So this is a big a difference. And some have broadband access, others have narrow accent. Exactly in, uh, in, in New Mexico, that must be a problem too, broadband and not narrow uh, things like uh, region, uh, regions which are remote, that might be a problem. Well, it seems, you know, you mentioned um, having, you know, um, access to these things, I mean, people who are well off may easily be able to buy a computer or the latest mm -hmm. tablet or smartphone. But since the, you know, the computers and laptops have become more accessible mm -hmm. and grown in popularity, the price has dropped somewhat. Yeah. I mean, is this changing at all? It is changing a bit, but not enough because it's still, for some equipment, it is still expensive, you know? And for some things, you need subs subscriptions yeah. for, for, of your connection and the like and th those might be very expensive. And for something, information sources on the internet, you have to pay for it. So poor people are, are tending to use the internet before for using all free things. Free, free, free. For free is not the best in terms of information. If you want to have real good in news and information, sometimes you have to pay. And yeah. some people which are ARM don't do it or can do it. Let's talk about as far as um, skills go. Uh, yeah. How are, what are the demographics between the digital skills of different ages, gender, and also um, other demographics? Well, skills is something about using the new technology and this is becoming ever more important. So skills is actually the most divide we can see now in this moment in populations. We do now a lot of uh, uh, research in our laboratory of uh, skills. We give uh, people all kinds of assignments of what to do on the internet. For instance, find the, the smallest uh, house or the, the, the cheapest, uh, the cheapest uh, 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 flight for somewhere, you see. That's an assignment. And then you see that uh, some people are very, very bad, bad good in using uh, sk skills and others are not good. For instance, there's a big difference in terms of education and in terms of age, but not in terms of gender. At, that means in, in Europe and in America, 
the gender difference in skills is minor, it's not big, but the skills in education and in age is still relevant. Are we seeing any changes in that in, in the last few years or anything? Yeah, we see some changes that we have some kind of skills. You have something skills which is called operational and formal. This is something like button knowledge. But you also have skills which are information, looking for information, <coughs> like for instance using a Google say search or something. Or strategic, finding the best uh, opportunities for finding things you're using. Then you, you need to use your brains, you see? And skills like communication, making a good profile on Facebook or whatever. So those are skills we have in our books and our uh, research. We, you, ha you have six kind of digital skills. And we have the different ones are between which are uh, medium related, like operational and formal skills. That means using the, the buttons and using uh, n navigation and browsing on the internet. That's more technical. And you have the content uh, uh, skills like information, communication, strategical distinctions. That's the difference. And what you can see in the research is that young people are better in button knowledge and the like, but not in information. That's what we've seen in our research in uh, laboratories and everywhere, that elderly people might be better on the internet than young people because they have more information and knowledge of things in the world. And when they are able to use the knowledge, the, 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 the buttons, the, the really technical things, then they might be better on the internet than young people. Because at the other way, idea is that peop young people who are very f fast in using computers and the like, but they don't know what actually they are doing. And they don't know what to want for, what to s search for, because they have not have too much knowledge of what the, uh, the affairs are working in the world and on the internet. So that searching and nav navigating everywhere and clicking, 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 but what are they going for? They don't have a good question and no answer to use, to find. So what are you, I mean, what are you, we discovering with the time that folks are spending? Are young people spending more time online? However, yeah. they may not be yeah. um, as uh, useful or um, skilled as yeah. finding exactly what they're yeah. looking for? But we found in our research that having more time using only that doesn't help enough. You don't make that, that doesn't mean that your level is again going up better in using your, 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 your buttons and the like. That will be better, but not in information and not in, in uh, strategic, strategic goals, finding your things on the internet. That is not better. But that means actually you need traditional, sometimes traditional education in classes and on schools. So as far as, um, let's, let's go back at 15 years ago, perhaps you just needed to have digital skills for your job. Yeah. Um, it seems like the, both of these, the digital world only existed in the workplace and then you had your personal life. However, now, today, those things have really it's merging, really. merged. Yeah. Um, when did this really s begin to happen and what really facilitated that? Well, that was done because it was ubiquitous. Everywhere you are using computers there, both at home and at the schools and in workplaces together. And we use the same things. For instance, we are using Facebook on work. This is not allowed, actually, but people are doing it. And at house, at house we are doing work, actually, because computers and smartphones are everywhere now. So the difference between the... the, the the, the spheres of living is eroding. I see. That's the reason why it's happening. Now you mentioned um, that, it's, I still find it interesting that th what you found with elderly people, that they're more skilled at actually using the internet than young people? Yeah, that's what we found. So it just seems like the more life experience is pretty easy to transfer into the digital world. Is this becoming yeah. easier as apps uh, yeah. and things like that make it easier to navigate? Yeah, yeah. On the condition that they learn to use the internet and l learn to use computers in a technical way, that the basic uh, knowledge of using the programs, navigating, browsing, 
what you are doing, and that's not that difficult to learn, I can tell you. So when elderly people are able to learn it in one way or another, by in some computer class or by using it by their family members or by young, uh, by nep nephews or, or sons or something, that might be better. Mm. The other way around means that when teachers think in class, when people, t teachers think that while all these young people they're mo are better in using uh, the internet and the new media than I, I ha don't have to uh, tell them anything, not have to educate them anything, they're wrong. Actually, teachers have to learn them a lot about using computers in terms of contents, about information and communication, how the, the words work, how the world works, how things work, how things are. So content education is still very important. You only have to learn the operational skills, that means using the, the computer. But that's e relatively easy, but learning things about the world, that means years and years of education. So we know we are on, on schools now, not, that's not for enough that we have to learn in schools for, for 10, 15, 20 years in our lives. Mm. And that's what we needed too, and also in the computer uh, age. Well, how is you know um, bridging the digital divide areas that are able to do that and have some success, how are they reaching those uh, underserved areas to help give people a better education? Yeah, that's, that's the, the still important thing that education is very important and very, very important also traditional education and not only uh, computer classes but traditional education that is still very relevant you know in these things so and you see that all kind of countries are different in having these policies the, uh, the countries that will be successful in the future will have very a purity for a priority for education and also for uh, using computer classes and other classes but it is more and more about contention and about s the content of things is very important in education. So let's talk a little bit about um, how those countries are addressing this. What countries in the world are going beyond just getting internet access and a computer to people? What, are they do what yeah. countries are going beyond that? The most uh, countries are in North and Western Europe and in South Korea and a bit also in Japan. Those are the best in uh, doing these things in education and also in computer uh, education. What are some of the things that they're doing? Well, they're doing more, uh, have more attention for education, more investment in education, and they have more invention in, in uh, investing in using computers and more uh, access, every, this broadband everywhere, but for instance in my country, the Netherlands, 89% has access to broadband at, host, at home. And that's a lot, you see. How so does that happen? I mean, do, do certain municipalities or cities yeah. make internet and Wi-Fi access just free for everyone? Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the policy of the government uh, or the European Union or the, uh, especially also in the government in South Korea. They had a, a, a bit a better uh, success and a better investment in, in opportunities in doing this than others because they thought this is the future. As far as how many countries um, in the world are, are, is there a small amount or is there a growing amount uh, to where they're making access to the internet a basic human right? Okay, access in the world is going more equal, but in using uh, the internet and computers, the differences are going better, better, more and more and more. The, the, the divide in terms of using is getting more and more important. And that is different. That, then it's very unfortunate that, for instance, in America, which is the first uh, uh, country in, in computers and the internet, all internet compu companies are ap American, that in America actually it's not the first level of using uh, computers and the internet. It's about uh, 50 or something in the world, 15 to 15. 
I mean, obviously the digital divide plays a role in that, but are there, are there any other things that are really um, keeping the United States from advancing in that category? Yeah, yeah. It's important for this economy and it's very important for productivity of the economy. And everybody knows it that in the future, 21st skills means more productivity in the economy. So this is also very important for the economy. This is not something soft or something. This is very hard for the economy. What is so far with much of our lives going online, it also seems with that, um, the ability to raise capital online also has transcended to the digital world. Many people are turning to the internet for, uh, to raise money yeah. to, um, for their profession um, in order to build, yeah. market their services. Um, how much has that changed over the last decade? Well, what we see here that in using computers and the internet, we see what we have seen is a called a usage gap. That means some people are using the internet for serious things, for getting a job and going ahead, and others are using the internet for entertainment and for small talk and for e-commerce, for shopping and the like. So that's a difference between people who, who use the internet for a very good opportunity for things and for their lives and for their jobs and for getting ahead. And others are using it for entertainment, for social things. Of course, very important, nothing against uh, entertainment, of course, certainly not in this country, not against uh, social things, but this is, of course, is very important for your future, to getting ahead, uh, to get a job, to get more opportunities. And then I'm worried about this, uh, this usage gap. In the future, we had uh, the so-called knowledge gap in using, uh, using televisions that in television, some people are using much more about the television than others. Some are looking for news information programs and others are only looking for soaps and music and the like. That difference already was there in the 1970s or something. But now we see that difference also on the internet, but the internet is much more important for your life now than television before, because now you need it for everything, for your school, for your works, for your um, you know, finding things, the best uh, flight or something, the, 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 the cheapest thing and the like. You need everything now for the internet. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the internet and democracy. Um, you know, more governments are turning to only online um, mm -hmm. um, access to different forms you may need or things mm -hmm. like that you and um, also when it comes to voting yeah um, certain places you can register online no and um, also it's starting to be to the point where you may also be able to vote online mm -hmm. in certain areas yeah um, what where are we now with that and I'd like to l move on to talking a little bit more about yeah. the security um, yeah. um, issues with that yeah well, in terms of online, you see most governments want to us to be online for everything. That this will be the first uh, ch and only channel, everything on the internet. But what we see in our research also about channeling using, that people are still using a lot of the telephone and the desks. Those, those are more popular for citizens than online. So when the government says we will do it for 100% online, then they'll have a problem with citizens, and especially with citizens which have low skills of the internet. So that is not something I could advise in terms of equality among citizens. But it's important of report that everybody has uh, access to the internet, doing online also for services. You talk about uh, security. For the government, it would be very important that 100% of the citizens will use the internet only, because then they can survey them what they're doing this for everything. That is a good thing for terms of security, but is it a good thing for democracy and for privacy and for freedom? I don't know. I mean, what are we seeing uh, in regards to that right now? Is some governments uh, monitoring? citizens and things like that yeah. obviously that's a big topic yeah. these days and people are becoming more aware of it yeah um, what are some of the things that people may not be aware of that 
governments or different agencies may be doing to monitor their citizens? They monitor everything. I can tell you they monitor everything. Not only businesses are monitoring them to consumers, but they also, governments are also monitoring citizens. That is what happened about 9-11, of course. After that time, uh, the, the government uh, did the same things as the, the businesses did. And now they're even better sometimes than using uh, businesses in surveying citizens. And I'm worried about this in terms of uh, freedom, because for me, privacy is a freedom right. You don't have freedom without privacy. That's my statement. What are some of the things that people may be surprised that the government may be monitoring them? Is there anything in particular that people might not be thinking? They might obviously know that their social media um, may be monitored yeah. or um, their emails. Is there anything else that they might be surprised about? Well, a lot of things, I think, because it's much, it goes much further than you can think. It's actually, if they want, everything. But of, of course, the government has got categories of people who are more dangerous than others. Some people who are not dangerous, they're not monitoring them, but some people who are in the category of being, perhaps being uh, radical or something, they're that everything will be surveyed, I can tell you, everything. Um, you know, speaking of governments and also, um, you mentioned businesses, and businesses obviously monitor much of our online activity, or we can be online yeah. and then all of a sudden we see advertisements for yeah. perhaps a a shoe brand that we yeah. we are checking out or a mm -hmm. different service they know these things they just happen to appear on our yeah. accounts i mean how how much has this really uh grown to and what what's the future going to be like um is it going to be the point where we could be walking across uh the street and the sign just automatically appears to perhaps that shoe brand that we're interested in that might be that might be happen that's not far away when we don't uh regard our privacy and our rights, that's not far away because we get a survey society going on, I'm afraid. Because it, the, the, we now have the tracking technologies with using smartphones, for instance, that every man near sh sh nearing a shop, well, you get a advertisement, but it also means that the government could read that too. Oh, that citizen is now that at that, at that store for instance, and he has a, a, a ben benefit, a social benefit, because he or she has no work, then he's not, he is not supposed to go to that expensive shop, you see, but he has a benefit. He's not able to, to, to buy something, so something must be wrong. He must have a really a, a job, or he must have criminal, to, criminal acts and the like. So then this would be very uh, information information for the, for the government in knowing this. And this is really already happening these kind of things in my country for instance well it seems like technology advances so fast yeah that it's hard for us to really catch up to what's yeah. happening and yeah. around us yeah. to when we are being monitored about yeah. certain things so but we do it ourselves that's the problem we, we all of the times we are clicking 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 not anything what people are looking for what you're clicking for instance and what you're doing and they want to be a surveyor. You do it yourself with your smart um, watches, with your smart this, smart that. You have all kinds of links with your friends. Well, that means that everybody who wants to survey you, like for instance, government or business, can walk, look what you're doing. You do it yourself, all this information. You're clicking all of the time on the computer with kinds of things and what you want and what you serve this and this. This is information. You do the work yourself as a consumer and, uh, and a citizen. You do it yourself. And but we are not aware enough about being about the privacy problems and about that the other, other, other actors might be using all this information against you. That uh, sometimes you want a, a mortgage or you want an uh, insurance, they don't give it because they have information about you that sometimes you didn't uh, pay this loan, you see? Mm -hmm. And then they know, oh, you're not uh, be uh, someone we can, uh, can understand or can, you're not, uh, yeah. What cities have you been to in the world that you think are the most um, advanced when it comes to bridging the digital divide? And what are some of those things that are happening? Well, most of them are, for instance, in uh, Seoul, that means in Korea, some in uh, Japan, 
and uh, some you see in uh, north and western uh, Europe that you can see because there's a policy for instance in the European Union of that's called inclusion inclusion of as many as possible of citizens and uh, consumers in the information society that is really government policy. I don't say it will be successful completely, from me, in my view, but they, they even they try to do it. Because this is my criticism to the American government, that they have no policy for this. They think when we have broadband for everybody, everything is solved. But that's not true, because I told you, rich people have still more uh, uh, opportunities in having equipment. And the most important problem is, of course, the difference of usage and skills. And they don't have a policy for this, not policy for education, digital education, for digital skills, no policy for cultural poli uh, policies in uh, why can you confront this usage gap that serious people, uh, serious things are used by some people, entertainment is used the internet for others. There's no policy at all for the government. They say this is free for all citizens to decide themselves. I can understand that this is the liberal uh, uh, opposition, but actually it means that the differences of categories in a country are going better, 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 better of differences, and that is a big problem in the future, I mean, because in the future everybody has to work with digital technology. Otherwise, we get the new age already that's going on, that robotic, robotic things are getting over our work. We are now uh, breeding people uh, on, in, in schools for, for, for jobs that are not there in 20 years, I can tell you. That's very interesting. I, I would, in I 20 wish. 20 years, there will be a lot of jobs not there anymore, secretaries, administrations, that data tips not there anymore. And now we have all kinds of schools where people who are 15 to 20 are still having this, uh, this schools about these jobs will won't be there. Uh, well, I want to thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Yeah. But thank you very much, Dr. Van Dyke, for joining us. OK, thank you. Our guest was Dr. Jan Van Dyke. I'm Anthony Moreno. Thanks for joining us for Fronteras at Changing America.